Hello, truth seekers, and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. All righty now, folks, grab your popcorn and settle in, because your favorite neighborhood critic is back with a steaming hot serving of royal tea that's so scalding, it might just melt your screens. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So, now, what's the scoop, you ask? Well, hold on to your fascinators, folks, because it looks like our favorite ginger prince is living it up in New York City, rubbing elbows with actual royalty and A-list celebrities. And where's Meghan, you ask? Well, let's just say she's probably at home in Montecito, frantically refreshing her Google alerts and wondering why her invitation got lost in the mail. That's right, folks. Prince Harry, the man who once couldn't so much as butter his own toast without Meghan's assistance, is suddenly Mr. Independent 2024. He's kicking off a week of solo engagements in New York faster than you can say Netflix docuseries. And let me tell you, the guest list for his first event is more star-studded than a Vanity Fair Oscar party. Let's break this down, shall we? Because there's so much to unpack here, it's like trying to fit the entire royal wardrobe into a carry-on suitcase. First up, we've got Harry attending a high-profile dinner organized by the World Health Organization. Now, that's already pretty impressive. But wait, there's more. Who should be in attendance but Her Majesty Queen Matilda of Belgium? That's right, folks. Harry's hanging out with actual, current, still-on-the-job royalty. Can you imagine the conversation? Harry. So, Matilda, how's the whole being a working royal thing going for you? Queen Matilda. Oh, you know, busy as always. How's, uh, California? Harry, nervous laughter. It's sunny? But the royal rubbing of elbows doesn't stop there. Belgian Premier Minister Alexander de Croo was also in attendance. He can just picture Harry Franticali trying to remember his Hig School French lessons. Bonjour, Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Où est la bibliothèque? And if that wasn't enough to make Meghan spit out her organic, fair trade, ethically sourced latte, the guest list also included officials from Sweden, Colombia, Zimbabwe, Georgia, Canada, Iceland, and Brazil. It's like a United Nations meeting, but with better catering. Oh, and did I mention Forrest Whitaker was there? Yes, that Forrest Whitaker. Oscar winning, Hollywood royalty Forrest Whitaker. I bet Harry was secretly hoping someone would ask for his autograph just for old time's sake. Now I know what you're thinking. But Mr. Neighborhood Critic, surely this is just one fancy dinner. Megan's probably joining him for the rest of the week, right? Oh, you sweet summer child. Allow me to burst that bubble of optimism faster than a toddler with a pin at a birthday party. According to Harry's spokesperson, and doesn't that just roll off the tongue? This dinner is just the appetizer in a week-long feast of solo engagements. We're talking appearances with African Parks, the Halo Trust, and the Diana Award. It's like Harry's playing philanthropic bingo and he's going for a full house. But here's where it gets really interesting, folks. Amidst all these engagements, Harry will also be furthering the work of the Archerwell Foundation. You know, the one he co-founded with Meghan? The one that's supposed to be their joint venture? Yeah, that one. But apparently, Meghan's contribution this week will be limited to well, we're not quite sure. Maybe she's in charge of updating their Instagram. Now, I'm not saying there's trouble in paradise. I'm just saying that if paradise were a person, it'd be sweating more than Prince Andrew at a pizza express. But let's play devil's advocate for a moment. Maybe, just maybe, this is all part of a grand plan. Maybe Meghan's at home, furiously writing Harry's speeches and picking out his ties via FaceTime. 
Maybe she's orchestrating this whole solo tour from behind the scenes, like a puppet master pulling the strings of a very tall, very ginger puppet. Or maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, she's realized that her presence might be a bit distracting. After all, every time Megan so much as breathes in public, it becomes international news. Maybe she's selflessly stepped back to let Harry shine on his own. Yeah, I couldn't say that with a straight face either. The truth is, folks, we're witnessing something pretty remarkable here. Prince Harry, the man who once seemed perfectly content to be one half of Harry and Meghan, is stepping out on his own. He's tackling serious issues, meeting with world leaders, and doing it all without his better half by his side. It's almost like he's remembering that he used to be, you know, a prince. A member of one of the most influential families in the world. A person who could affect real change just by showing up and shaking a few hands. And let's be honest, it's a good look on him. Gone is the slightly lost puppy dog expression he's been sporting in recent years. Instead, we're seeing glimpses of the old Harry. The one who could charm a room full of dignitaries as easily as he could connect with veterans or children. But of course, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. Or rather, the elephant that's conspicuously absent from the room. Meghan's non-appearance at these events is raising more eyebrows than a Botox convention. Is this a sign of growing independence? A strategic move to rehabilitate Harry's image separate from the Mexit narrative? Or is it simply a case of Meghan not wanting to brave the New York humidity? Those Californian blowouts don't fare well in East Coast weather after all. Whatever the reason, one thing's for sure, it's got us all talking. And maybe that's exactly what they want. After all, in the world of celebrity, there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? But let's take a step back for a moment and consider the bigger picture. Harry's engagements this week aren't just about hobnobbing with the elite. He's tackling some pretty heavy issues. Childhood violence, mental health, conservation, landmine clearance. These are causes that have been close to his heart for years, long before he met Meghan. In a way, it's like we're seeing Harry come full circle. He's returning to his roots, championing the causes that shaped him as a young prince. And he's doing it on a global stage, leveraging his unique position as both a former royal and a current celebrity to shine a light on important issues. It's almost enough to make you forget about all the drama, isn't it? Almost. Because let's face it, folks, as much as we might admire Harry's commitment to these causes, we can't help but wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Is Meghan supportive of this solo venture? Or is she at home practicing her best? I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed face. Are we witnessing the beginning of a new chapter in the Sussex story? Or is this just a brief interlude before normal service resumes? Only time will tell, my friends. But one thing's for sure, I'll be here, ready to analyze every handshake, dissect every speech, and speculate wildly about every absent duchess. Because that's what we do, isn't it? We watch, we wonder, and we wait for the next twist in this never-ending royal saga. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.